There's Paul here. I just thought I'd show you a little bit about my world, about the things that I do when I get my photographs back um, out of the camera. And as you know, I've recently been to Glencoe and the area around it. And these are all the photographs, some of which you've seen, some of which I've posted. Um, I got a lot of love for the uh, for the deer shots. There's quite a lot more, but um, I won't be burdening you with those. But I thought I'd pick one um, particular one to show you from start to finish exactly how I go about editing some of my images. Now, obviously, everyone will be different, but there's some basic things that I do that doesn't change. Doesn't matter what it is that I'm uh, that I'm editing. So. Um, right, so let's pick one. So I tend to go through my images and either grade them using a star system. Uh, this is, by the way, this is this is Lightroom, Lightroom Five, and um, I find it's very good for being able to actually categorise, search, and store um, all my images. As you can see, they're all saved by date. They're very easy to uh, to access, and you can tag them over here so I can find them um, you know at a later date. Uh, trouble is I'm currently up to 98,593 images. Not unusual for a photographer, in fact it's probably quite low to be fair. But uh, anyway on to the editing. So I think the one we're gonna pick, let's have a look at this one. Um, so this is straight out the camera. Um, you can see the settings up here. These are easily changed at uh, the time it was taken. I oh, that's 4 p.m. That's quite uh, quite nice for 4 p.m. That actually. Um, and then we've got this. Okay, so so this is the the viewing mode. So we call this the library. What we need to go is into development, and this is where I can make my adjustments. I can also get rid of that side because we've done our selections there. And uh, <coughs> although I must say that on this side here. There's lots of preset filters. I tend not to really use those very often. Um, they apply a set preset like so. Some of them are quite nice and, and there's certainly a use for them. But um, for me, I'm going to do this from scratch. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, um, if we have a look here, you can see the this is the lens I used up in the top left-hand corner, EF17-40. to 40. Uh, it's, a, it's an f4 lens which is perfect for this type of thing. It's a very wide lens You do get a little bit of distortion purely because of it being such a wide lens um, So what you can do is you can go down to the lens corrections which inside the software it has a lot of um, uh, profiles in it for different lenses and what we can do is click that and it already recognizes what it is as you can see it has up there and it's applied a fix so um, a little bit of the distortion and a little bit of the vignetting vignetting is when the corners are dark has been removed um, the other thing I'm going to do um, is address my pet peeve which is a straight horizons now it's very difficult with a lake because a lake really can come in and out and it can be a bit confusing but um, Let's just put the exposure up so I can see that shoreline a bit better. So what do we reckon? I think that needs straightened a bit. Now there's two things you can do. You can either swivel it on its axis here to get the one. It's probably that, but let's put it off a bit. Um, or you can actually use this ruler where you pick two points and draw a line. And you say, okay, so that's going to be the horizon. And it will put it for you there. Okay. It's going to crop it and that's all good. Now the other thing you'll notice as well <coughs> is because of the crop bar is up there, um, your tree, it's really weird, you can you see you've got these uh, nine squares which have two lines up and two lines down. The rule of thirds says that you should put your tree on a line, okay? And in fact that would be a perfect composition because you've got uh, it in a third there and you've got it on there so the horizon's on the third and that's on there um, of course that then changes the dimension of the actual shape so so if we just reset that 
um, if we actually reset the whole thing again and put it back to, to normal okay <coughs> and we just quickly reapply the um, that like so and let's do the horizon very quickly again it wasn't really too far off so let's just pop it like that okay um, what we can do when we're doing a crop is actually restrict it so it will continue to be the same dimensions as the photograph was taken. So as I'm making this smaller, it's locked. I'm sure you, you've all seen this before, uh, like so. Um, so you can, yeah, so you, so you can actually do that if you like. Okay. So let's have a look at that. How does that look? That's not so bad. I'm probably thinking I'm a little bit short on the bottom there. I think I'll make it a bit larger actually. Uh, I know that's slightly off. Of course the other option, you know, I mean to be fair, it's also absolutely acceptable to have it bang in the middle. That makes quite an interesting composition as well. It just depends what you fancy. It's what you like. Uh, it's very particular to what interests you but I think I'm gonna go for something like something like that that's fine okay so we've got the crop right now if we have a look here we can see there's lots of lots and lots of different things we can adjust and I tend to work my way down I've also got a visual clue here to how things are this shows you all the different colors um, and how bright and whether or not they're overexposed or underexposed. We've also got a nice little gadget here, which is this here. If I click this, if this was, as you can see, it's much brighter over there. If the exposure was a bit high, can you see that red here? This is telling me that it's clipping. That basically means it's so bright that there is no information left in those squares, so it really doesn't look very good at all. Uh, luckily the exposure the camera took uh, was, as you can see, not so bad. It looks quite good. Um, sorry, I'm just, I still think that horizon's just slightly off. Let's just get that like that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Okay, so what else am I going to do? So I'm having a look here. Um, it's always a place to zoom in, have a look to see if there are any artefacts, anything that shouldn't be there. Uh, no, it looks all good. Uh, I'm not really liking this, by the way, but we can deal with that later. We can go into Photoshop and clone that out, although there is a clone tool here. Um, this is okay for taking little dust spots off, but I'm not very keen on it for close cropping. Uh, and anything that's, you know, you have to be very specific on that to make sure it doesn't look altered. Um, I do like the fact that there's some light on this tree. Obviously the sun's setting over here, uh, out of shot. Uh, luckily, because of the way my camera was set up, there is no flaring. That's always a problem. Uh, but anyway, so let's go over. Let's have a look here. So looking at the histogram, it's a little bit to the left. The lumps are on this side, and we really want it probably here, um, especially for this type of shot. So what I might do is just increase the exposure like this. Now, this has made this side quite light, but look, it's quite frankly, it is a sun uh, set, so it's going to be light. But I think I might just make it slightly less like so. I don't even know if you'd even notice that. Um, the other thing I could do uh, if I wanted to is put a put this on. This is um, um, a way to graduate the actual brightness from one side to the other. So clicking on that little square I can now draw a gradient like so and I can apply changes just to the left hand side of the screen. So for instance if I drop the exposure only the left of the screen changes. So I can balance that up, I can make it much brighter. Obviously that's clipping now, so that would be no good. So I can do that, which is fine. But I think that is going to be okay, in my opinion. What I would say is that this looks a little bit mushy. I quite like blue and yellows in my um, photographs, and we've got nice blue in the sky. Uh, but I think we can make it a bit bluer. Now the temperature is something which you can set in camera, but of course with uh, this being a CR2 file, which is a raw file, you get a lot of uh, ability to alter it. So I'm going to just show you. So if I slide it to the left, um, you can see it should be getting bluer and bluer and bluer and bluer. Oh, no it won't, <laughs> because I haven't 
click that. Okay, so now you'll see it'll be getting bluer and bluer and bluer and bluer. And you can choose how blue you like it. I like it quite blue. Um, I quite like it probably like so. Now, um, what we've lost is the sunshine colour. So we have something here which is, um, um, it's called a radial filter. It's a bit like the graduated filter we had before. Um, but what you can do is you can apply it in a circular pattern rather than a straight pattern. So what I'm going to do is just draw this um, ellipsoid shape or rugby ball shape and pop it there. Uh, maybe slide it back a little like so. Make it about that shape. And now I'm going to um, apply a change just within here. And what I'm going to do is warm it up. So I'm going to warm up the middle there. And as you can see, that sunshine now looks a little nicer. I'm just going to make that a little larger. Okay, and as you can see, maybe a little, if I go too much, you can see that would be crazy. Um, although it's quite nice, actually. That let's just knock that back to there. We've got a little bit of clipping there. It's not really a problem, but if you really wanted to be specific with that, all you have to do is drop the highlights a little so that it would disappear virtually okay so that's done let's do that so now we've got um yeah, we've got more interesting image more colorful now we haven't changed saturation or anything here um what we've got um we could do we've got down here we've got clarity vibrance and saturation clarity makes the the mid-tones uh, more contrasty um i mean that's extreme i i, I use that sometimes um uh, occasionally when it's a little bit misty I might use it um, but not not regularly um, what I do tend to use saturations thing you've probably seen yourself because if you can you see that I've seen lots and lots of pictures like that with very very vibrant colors and I, I, I just not a fan of it being so vibrant as that I quite like um, some vibrancy so Saturation I don't make normally a very small number, so that's a plus three there. Um, vibrance, I'm more a fan of vibrance, which basically changes the non-primal colours. So as you can see, that's a different set of colours changed to the other one. And this is one you can be a little bit more generous with. So if I put that to say about 20, uh, no, maybe about 25, I think that's looking quite nice. Okay, so what else can we do with this? Now, there is a little bit of snow on the top of here. That could be altered if I liked it, but uh, quite frankly, I think that's okay. Um, if I go down to the tone curve, this is something that you can do as well. Um, if I thought that was a little dark, but I didn't want to overexpose it too much, there is something called the light slider here, which will change the curve. And as you can see, as I put that up, it's getting light without actually changing the uh, overexposure at this side. Um, I think it was pretty much okay where it was. As I say, the camera's obviously done a really good job. I use a Canon 5D Mark III, um, which is a uh, it's a very intelligent, clever camera. So it, it keeps me right when I make my cock-ups, as we all do. Um, so yeah, so this you could actually alter the saturation very specifically. For instance, if I thought the blue wasn't blue enough, I can change the saturation um, quite simply by doing that. I don't think I need to do that. One thing I do find very interesting, if I wanted to darken the sky without putting another filter on, because you don't want to start messing on with this bit here, I think this is quite nice. Uh, you go to luminance, and if I give you an, a, an extreme example of taking... Um, oh, sorry, we're still on saturation, my apologies. Right, so if we go into luminance and then we take the blue right the way down, you can really darken the sky. But as you can see, everything in moderation. You can see, um, obviously, around here, uh, there's a lot of artifacts around here. It looks quite naff. So um, in this case, I think I'll only knock it down maybe by about six uh, points there. The other thing you'll find is as you come down within the sky itself, you'll start getting a few... Um, a bit of noise so it's something to use with caution but it can be quite useful um, apologies as well I've got a bit of a cold so um, I am sniffing a little 
Uh, split toning is very interesting, but this is what you would use probably if you wanted a very extreme effect. We're not going to use that today. This is really good. This is um, uh, looking at either sharpening or reducing noise. So if I was to just zoom into a bit, to, which is probably going to be a little noisy, you can see here there's a few dots. I don't know if you'll see that on the screen, but you know, I can remove all of it if I wanted to. But look, as you can see, that becomes quite a soft image, so I think we're going to be okay, quite frankly. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about that at all. And uh, we'll just undo that back to its normal uh, setting. So, um, further down from here, this is something I, I often use, and this is a vignette. This is actually putting these darker corners back onto the picture. It can be quite a nice way to frame. As you can see, that's bringing it in there too much looks quite artificial again used with caution or used um, sparingly it's really nice um, the other thing you could do is use this uh, uh, the radial filter as well that's something you can use um, I won't go into this camera calibration but um, basically you can change uh, the settings appropriately to how you had it set in your camera uh, I don't tend to use that I like doing everything from from start. So, uh, final look through here. I think we've pretty much uh, done everything we can. I think the blacks can be used very useful if you want to really deepen the, the contrast, but I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, the one thing I might do actually, just to show you, um, I might just lighten these this bark very, very slightly. Okay, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use this selective brush here. Um, by hitting zero on the keyboard it will paint a mask on if I just do a little bit here you'll see it will selectively choose the light bits of the tree uh, now if you notice I've gone over a little bit there so if I hit that and just tidy that up take it off it's all good and if I just continue up like this I'm just going to do it roughly I would normally take more time of course but I don't want to take up more of your time uh, just move it down a little uh, and we're just going to where the highlighted branches touch the by the Sun uh, if we zoom back out again you can see that uh, that's the bit I've drawn on we'll forget about that for now I'm gonna hit zero to get rid of the mask but um, I now start applying things so lots of things I can change all of these things here uh, if I put the exposure fully <laughs> you can see that's clearly a bit crazy but what I'm going to actually do is simply warm it up and this is again on your temperature slide so I'm going to warm that up even more than it is by about 21 that would probably be nice um, I'm going to touch up the exposure by 0.2 and yeah I think that'll be very good okay um, just to see um, I don't like this, this is putting me off, so we're going to crop all this out. Let's see how good it does in here. As I say, I'm not a fan, I prefer doing the this sort of um, thing in Photoshop, but let's see how it works, let's see how well it does. So I just click on it, it finds something of similar, and if I click done, <laughs> well there you go. Not so bad is it, that's, uh, that's pretty much done the job for me. So. Um, I probably would see, can you see there's a repeat of a clone there, I'd probably lose that in Photoshop. Um, but uh, quite frankly I think that's pretty much the finished image. So uh, I hope this has been interesting. Again apologies for me sniffing on there. And uh, I might do another one of these uh, at a later date. And Happy New Year everybody, because it's um, almost midnight on Tuesday the 30th of December 2014. So um, I hope you have a nice... New Year celebration and a safe one.